Move over, Hushbuck. There's a new McFarlane Batman that's about to get the most repaints, both physically and digitally. So, with a recent spike in DC Rebirth Batman, I figured that instead of doing individual reviews for some of the latest releases, some of which have proven to be a little controversial, I figured, you know what, let me dig up my existing Rebirth figures, Rebirth Batman figures, and kind of draw this really broad comparison of how far we've come with this specific mold and whether or not it's giving the Hushbuck a bit of a run for its money considering just how many repaints we really have included in this video and also not including in this video. More on that a little later. But before you, you see four of the existing DC Rebirth Batman figures. You got the original, you got some that were included in some bundles, some gold label bundles. You have some more of the recent releases and even some GameStop very gold label exclusives that are very gimmicky uh, that kind of snuck in there when I was doing that McFarlane gimmicks video but I didn't exactly have a chance to cover and I figured you know what this is exactly that golden opportunity to do so. But before we do we got to cover the essentials. We actually have to cover some of the basics that we've come to no, and for most people kind of love, which are going to be the original, well, at least more so the original DC Rebirth Batman figures. One of which is the original release right here, and then a sort of light gray variant. I'm going to cover these very, very quick because technically speaking, I've actually already covered both of these guys previously on the channel. In fact, let's cover the OG. This is the initial DC Rebirth Batman that was released as a single release, as a single McFarlane figure in wide retail release in terms of being able to be found at targets at walmart's even in fact there was a very brief period where i feel like this guy was i don't want to go as far as call it the peg warmer but he was very broadly found like he was a little scarce in targets he was like the ultimate huntable batman especially since a lot of people looked at this design and thought to themselves yeah this could be a definitive batman for many right up there with the blue and gray batman the hushbuck the black and gray hushbuck uh, batman mold and even the nightfall batman so an awful lot of those specific batmans that have this very quintessential comic book look to them i would argue is for many considered to be their definitive batman and i can s sincerely see the argument made for this specific design because as time has gone on because in my initial review i kind of i kind of roasted this guy a little bit just, just a smidge because even though i did like the overall color scheming the overall accuracy and the detailing behind this specific design and suit i did look at some of the design choices as far as the bat symbol on the chest and a little bit of the cowl and the yellowing around the belt etc that to me just look like the kind of batman that you see on a coloring book you know what i mean like whenever you go to the dentist and you see a dc heroes coloring book on the table there to distract some of the kitties essentially i feel like this is the batman that i always see in that design you know what I'm saying? This is always the Batman that I see in those coloring books. It's not a bad design, but it's just the one that reminds me of those coloring books. It's not like your quintessential comic Batman. For that, I see more so of the Jim Lee stuff. In fact, some of the Todd McFarlane stuff himself. But as time has gone by, this guy has actually kind of grown on me a little bit. And the muted color with the darker gray, the black overall, the very muted purple, the very plum purple in the underside of his cape and the very rigidness of the cape despite it still being rubber and still being cut in that little slit when you pull him out of the box overall like i said that slim design to his look that still looks very chiseled and cut but still quintessential batman despite the girthiness of the thighs just like i said overall has won me over technically i've already covered this guy and in that review i also covered some of the accessories some of the articulation so i really don't want to like i said retread old ground with this guy just know that over time this guy has really won me over as far as a really good design for the character as far as having that very slim look that very unique design to the cowl to the mouth the stubble that is slightly uh, painted there on the face plate it could have been done a little bit better because from afar it looks a little bit like dirt but i get the idea that they were going for and overall the concept has really won me over as a few months went by though they released this version of the dc rebirth batman that was included in the very controversial gold label Clayface three pack and by controversial i mean literally just me because uh people got kind of up in arms about my theory guys 
it was a theory. It was a stupid ass theory on an action figure. And you guys acted like I laundered money from a charity and held on to it for t 10 years, you know? It's it's not that big of a deal, guys. But comments aside, one of the aspects I tackled in that video was going to be this repainted variant of the DC Rebirth Batman, which overall is still boasting the exact same buck, only this time you can definitely see an awful lot of the differences in color scheming. Overall, you still have ma the majority of some of the very essentials for Batman, specifically the cowl, the gauntlets, and the boots being black. You still have the cape being black on the outside, but that plum slightly lighter shade of purple on the gray one over here it looks like it's a i don't know if it's maybe the hue itself being lighter or maybe it's got more of a matte finish whereas over here it's got a little bit of a sheen a little bit of a gloss to the inside part of the cape but of course the biggest difference is that instead of a muted dark gray you have this very light gray on the costume here that is a little akin to his original first appearance look and then the yellow overall around the rim of the symbol as well as on the belt it's a little darker it's a little bit more golden so to speak but this time he's also missing the black accents on the sides of the belt outside of that though he's pretty much exactly the exact same figure as far as articulation is the same even the head sculpt although this time he's missing a little bit of the stubble and it seems to have gone a little bit of a tan around the mouth plate but outside of that, everything else is pretty much the same. Even the accessories are sculpted exactly the same. The grapple gun is most especially identical. But this time, the Batarang has this colorway that is both bronze and black. It looks like it's got a little bit of rust. It looks like it's been weathered a little bit. I'm trying to trigger some of you guys. <laughs> God damn, guys. Uh, okay, I get it. He shot his Batarangs into Clayface. So did Batwoman. And that's why they're brown. But there was nowhere in the description that said that. So, hey, whatever. So, now that we've gotten those guys out of the way, the essentials and the recap, so to speak, it's time to cover the new addition to the Rebirth Batman family, and that's going to be this blue and gray variant that's kind of striking a little bit of a balance between these two guys, as you can blatantly see. You have a... Darker shade of gray versus this guy, but still lighter than the original Rebirth Batman. And this guy was literally just released not too long ago, just a matter of weeks as a recording of this video. However, the initial release of this guy, you would have thought to have been a bit of a have garnered a bit of a more of a positive reaction considering that the color scheming and the actual approach to the design of this version of the Rebirth Buck would have pleased an awful lot of fans specifically since you have a colorway that's hearkening to an awful lot of people's definitive Batman you have this 1975 look to the overall aesthetic as far as the gray complementing the blue the blue is now overtaking the black parts of the cowl the cape there's this time no purple found whatsoever it's just straightforward either gray or blue with a little bit of a muted kind of copperish gold look to the rims around the bat symbol this time around as well as of course the utility belt with the black accents this time you see an awful lot more black accent tree if that's even a word happening with the belt as opposed to the original whereas in the original you only had it on the ridges on the sides of the belt that's actually looping around this time it's not just there but also included into the buckle itself outside of that the sculpting is more or less identical as far as the cape the body the joints the articulation is exactly the same only this time i will admit I don't know if it's like a printing thing, maybe it's just a matter of how my luck turned out to be, whether it be with the original Rebirth in a positive format or with the new one in a slightly negative format. There's something about the joints that feel just a little finicky. Uh, it could just be my individual release. I don't think that this is necessarily going to be that much of a widespread issue, but just something to kind of take into account when you do unbox your brand new Rebirth Blue and Gray Batman. And then the ankles were kind of molded and printed out in a very specific way that makes him incredibly difficult to stand. And the reason for why I have this kind of approach or, or viewpoint on the way that this guy was assembled and constructed versus their original take on uh, quite honestly on the original rebirth or even on the newer one would have to be that even the cape feels just a little thinner and i almost want to say just a little cheaper I don't know. It's still not bad quality. It, it really isn't. It still feels pretty rigid and much more flexible and but yet firm than other Batman capes that I have actually kind of 
had the unpleasantry of meddling with in the past. So you still have a good balance. It's just that compared to the rigidness and the girthiness and the quality of the original Rebirth, something does feel just mildly lost in terms of quality. But overall, I was still pretty satisfied with the way that this guy can still be posed and moved about as far as the joints. Although the ones on the arms do feel, like I said, just a little looser than the original Rebirth. Once we get to the head sculpt is where things did look like they were modified just a tad. You can definitely see that the sculpting around the mouth plate looks a little bit more full. It looks like they filled up his cheeks. And of course, he's this time got no stubble and still a tan, but still different in terms of skin tone versus either of the Rebirth Batmans that came before. So I do find it kind of interesting that they pretty much overhauled the entirety of the head sculpt as far as the actual look to his head, the brow, the overall size of his head, the mouth plate, etc. So you'll notice right here looking at them side by side that there's definitely something that was overtaken with the head sculpt, but that's incredibly vital considering one of the more unique aspects and rather one of the more unique positive aspects about this particular use, usage of the DC Rebirth Batman. And that's going to be that outside of the traditional accessories that he comes bundled with once again, and two of them are going to be, of course, the Batarang and the Grapple Gun from before, exactly the exact same accessories as far as sculpting, but this time you'll notice that they are plated out in this very muted, copperish looking kind of gold that is found on, around the utility belt and on the rim of the bat symbol. And like I mentioned in my short review for the Arkham Knight Prestige Edition of Batman, I'm not sure I'm the biggest fan of these super solid gold accessories. Again, they look like Call of Duty microtransactions <laughs> that you bought off the store and you kind of feel guilty about brandishing them because then everybody knows that you paid for gun cosmetics like what's the matter with you and as far as functionality and fitting into his hands etc they're pretty much again identical to the ones that came before but that's actually not where the accessories stop with this guy and that's probably one of the biggest reasons to really pick this guy up right now in store he actually comes with an extra pair of hand accessories i took the liberty of actually doing a bit of a swap prior to the video because by default he comes with a fisted hand on the right and this kind of gang sign looking <laughs> it kind of looks like a gang sign but at the same time it also looks like a very posh kind of look to his left hand with the two middle fingers kind of jointed together i don't know what kind of gesture this is meant to be maybe kind of like a like a dynamic pirouette kind of look to his left hand but anyways this time he comes with this second pair that you can then swap out for the existing hands that are technically still found on the ex prior released uh, DC Rebirth Batman with one of the grappling hands on his right and then the fist on the left but this time you got now a fist on the right so you can actually have him be double fisted or have one of them be gripping and then the other one like I said extending to make it look like maybe he's aiming or he's flying or he's reaching out for something so that's pretty cool Cool that these are also thrown in here and it gets even cooler to know that McFarlane went ahead and threw in an unmasked head sculpt so this is where we start to get into territory that I personally really love when it comes to picking up McFarlane's bang for your buck value packaged in side of the box to make the price worth it and for the most part it looks like they really did have a bit of a banger here including this unmasked head sculpt now the actual look to the head sculpt it's not exactly one of my favorites i kind of wish that he would have had a different design to his face or a different expression overall the sculpting is really not that bad he retains again the color scheming the skin tone the look to the mouth plate and then when we get to the hair it's actually really well done as far as sculpting and having it kind of combed, combed over to the side the eyes do look a little mispainted as far as having kind of like that murky look they don't look as refined as they could have been so it looks like he's looking in one direction with one eye and then kind of a little lower or off to the center on the left. I don't know. There's something about the actual kind of angle to his eyes that I think could have been handled a little bit better. But as far as actual sculpting behind the chin, behind the face, the chin is probably just a little pro attracted towards the front a little bit there i guess you could argue that maybe the actual design to his look of, of his unmasked head looks a little too supermanish if i could you know blaspheme just a tiny bit here he looks a little bit too much like clark kent and not as much as what i expected this bruce wayne to look like but still the novelty of being able to have an unmasked head goes a long way and again everything that's included right here would make do for a really great package going and retailing at 20 bucks the problem, however, is that this guy's not retailing at 20 bucks. He's not even retailing at $22.99, so, you know, that couple of 
dollar pushback. No, twenty four ninety nine, twenty five dollars, and that's before tax. When you think of a twenty five dollar McFarlane Toys figure, you think that you're either getting a build a figure or a page puncher. Obviously, as you can tell, there's no extra comic book included. There's not even a physical build a figure piece because this is really what does it for the physical accessories he comes bundled with. This is what leads us into the dangerous, slippery slope of what this guy's release is actually presenting. McFarlane Digital. Cracking open the box and looking at the back cardboard insert, you'll notice that you're greeted with the traditional trading card and the circular base, except that base has a very egregious McFarlane Digital stamp right on it to remind you the reason for why you're spending the extra five bucks, and that's going to be this extra card right next to the actual trading card that reads McFarlane Toys Digital. And on it, you're going to have the code, and of course, I can show it off right there because at this point, it's already been redeemed, the code to be able to authenticate and redeem your digital collectible along with instructions. And so the process was very unintuitive to say the least, because I figured, you know what, let me approach it from a very very much a novice, very much someone who's not about that NFT life, who's not into really digital collectibles, anything like that, but I thought to myself, let me keep an open mind to see exactly what McFarlane is all about. And so I thought to myself, let me, let me start from the first impression sort of step when you're greeted with your first exposure to McFarlane Digital, which is actually going to be the code that's on the side of the box. So I figured, let me start off with that. Pulled out my phone, scanned the QR code, and ultimately it just led me to the website. In the website, it did a decent job of walking me through signing up for my own account and redeeming this code by scratching off the little bits right here, like a lottery ticket, and then redeeming said code. And upon doing so, I was greeted with the notification within that website that I managed to redeem my digital collectible, which really ended up being the original DC Rebirth Batman, the black and purple one. As in the one that's actually not here before me. So if you wanted a digital version of this exact figure that you actually ended up buying, you're not really getting that. You're not really guaranteed that. I actually ended up getting the original DC Rebirth, which sure, from a subjective point of view, I like that color better. But what if the average collector wanted to get a digital version of this guy? You're pretty much kind of taking a chance at that point with the digital collectible. Plus you're not really getting the rarest of them all. In fact, I was greeted with a common rarity value. So thanks, McFarlane, for letting me know that I practically got the one that most people are probably going to end up with. Furthermore, again, the process of actually being able to look at my digital collectible was just a ginormous pain in the ass because upon loading that up on my phone... It turns out that this is not exactly the actual McFarlane toy app. In order to be able to actually look at your collectible inside of your own set background or you know set place, whatever, that virtual reality kind of space that you have for your collection, you actually have to download the app on either Windows or Mac on an actual computer because the actual computing power you're going to need to be able to navigate the 3D environment, move about your collectibles in a very 3D space, yeah, it's going to take a toll. In fact, more so of a toll than I thought that it would because upon downloading the app onto my computer, not only did it crash once and blue screen me, but the actual, like I said, the process of being able to navigate through it all, sure, you can use the arrow keys or the WSD keys, but what made it even worse is that upon redeeming my code, my collectible was not there. I actually had to wait until the very next day for them to mint it and for them to actually properly synchronize with the wallet. And then I had to not only synchronize with an external site to be able to come up with that wallet that happened to have my Batman collectible in there, but I needed to actually sign up because I never had a wallet ever before because I had no need to deal with NFTs before. And so I had to pull that up. There was just so many steps and so many runarounds and backward ass steps that I just thought to myself, yeah, I was able to finally navigate and almost 24 hours later managed to create a space where I had my digital collectible DC Rebirth Batman in there. That's this scale, so it's this tiny little thing that you have to zoom in, zoom in on. But in terms of actually playing with it, articulation, functionality, poses, and anything like that, I can't really do anything like that. 
I can only do that with the physical figure here in mind. So not only do you make the process very unintuitive, and the only reason for why I was able to finally reach a final resolution with it is because I just happen to be a bit tech savvy. What about your average collector that's not going to be tech savvy, that doesn't want to deal with any of that stuff? How do you justify the extra $5? And frankly, I just don't really think that you do. Matters were only made worse when I realized that there was no digital Build-A-Figure because they were advertising this along with the Aquaman and Green Lantern that are part of this wave, this McFarlane digital wave, to also be able to build the Mongol Build-A-Figure. Except, you need to get all three. You can't just get one and get the piece, which you can technically do in physical form. In physical form, you can still get a Build-A-Figure, and you'll be surprised by how that has a bit of a psychological implementation on the average person to kind of get us to be like, well, I have the piece now, and with this case, and in this specific way, usually the average amount of pieces that you need is four. You know, at four, Build-A-Figures to then grab all the pieces to put them together and create the Build-A-Figure. Here you only got three, if you had made a physical, I feel like more more than you know, more collectors probably would have shelved off that extra 50 bucks to get those two other pieces and build a Mongo, which is technically already a mega figure that's out there. But here, you by force need to buy all three figures, $75 worth, to build the figure. And then you don't even really get to build it. You probably only get like a code. This is just theorizing, but you probably just get the code, redeem it, and then boom, there's Mongo there. You don't actually get to you know, maybe drag the pieces digitally to then build them and then, you know, function it that way. No, it's just the code that you redeemed. The, 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 the fun factor is really lost there. So, technically speaking, there are fixes there that McFarlane can implement by incorporating features of being able to maybe build this figure digitally within your playground, have functionality. And hell, since we're going into the digital space, you should be able to do some things inside of that space that you can't really do in real life, like certain poses that are just a nuisance to do in, in real life that require flight bases or anything like that. You can do that, at least if they were to actually move forward with that functionality. Right now, that's not present. And sure, that's st there's still room for it to grow. But you know the old saying, you can only make a first impression once. And right now, that first impression with McFarlane Digital is sadly a little bit tainted for me. So lucky for me, I had another DC Rebirth Batman to get me to chill about the current situation with digital collectibles and NFTs. And that is going to be the Frostbite edition of DC Rebirth Batman, which happens to be a limited edition. It's obviously one of those McFarlane gimmick figures that would have been incorporated into that last McFarlane gimmick video that I did, except I managed to find them very last second, just enough to get a couple of box shots into that video, but sadly not quick enough for me to actually be fe featuring it in the video as far as actually shooting B-roll and whatnot. But I thought to myself, this DC Rebirth Batman comparison is actually the perfect opportunity to look at this GameStop exclusive. So you can only really find them at GameStop, and thankfully, at the GameStop where in the marketplace where I found this guy at, I was also able to pick up the Frostbite edition, which I initially wasn't going to do until I actually noticed the box in person and thought to myself, that's actually a pretty cool looking box. It's got this, you know, kind of opaque frostbite type of look to the overall box where you have this translucent blue to it it looks very sleek very colorful i even like that the gold label stamp on it it's not an actual like stamp or laminated kind of paint aesthetic it's actually baked into the plastic so it still has that granular kind of matte semi matte finish to it and I thought it was pretty neat to actually look at the box. And sure, again, it's kind of gimmicky with the whole numeric limited edition pieces, etc. But just something about it, I kind of gravitated to. I just kind of wish that they would have lightened up the opacity on the inside box. Because when you remove the sleeve, it still has that opaque, very washed out kind of look that I can't properly see the figure inside. It would have been nice to have gotten an actual translucent window. But once you get past that, you are then greeted with this Frostbite edition of the DC Rebirth Batman. And yeah, you can definitely see that this is definitely going to be a very niche, limited edition version of the DC Rebirth Batman that is not necessarily going to kind of match everybody's tastes. In fact, I was pretty surprised to see that I was kind of vibing with it because generally speaking, when it comes to these like translucent colorways, I am not about it. I never liked translucent 
color schemes like back in the late 90s when it was all the rage from the Nintendo 64 to the Macintosh computers. I never liked them. I really never gravitated towards them. But over time, this DC Rebirth Batman, it kind of grew on me for some reason. I don't know if maybe it's the texturing that they have this kind of like icy look where it's not just a straight light blue, greenish blue plastic. It's that greenish blue but then you have this murkiness to it that makes it look like it's actually Batman kind of chiseled out of an ice block. And what really makes the novelty work is that generally around the thigh, bicep, and torso area, you can see a little bit of that plastic peering through. But it's around the joints that then you see these solid pieces that they obviously had to kind of print out in a, with a different material to make sure that they're bendable and formidable but still be able to be movable to give you firm joints. So I find it interesting that when you take a very close look, you can actually see the ratchetiness of the gears on the outwards part of the joints really work in tandem with the figure and I think that kind of adds this sort of skeletal look that strangely really works for me. Don't get it twisted though, it is still at the end of the day DC Rebirth Batman, you still got the same bug, the same sculpting, same girthy legs but the lankier torso physique and even the same articulation of which again similar to the McFarlane Digital Court of Owls version over here, you still are dealing with some areas around the arms that feel just a little bit more feeble than it did back with the original black and purple release and that still translates a little bit over to the ankles, they're a little bit wonky similar to that of the Court of Owls blue digital version over here where I have to kind of bend them inwards in order to be able to get them flat and get him to be kind of smooth amongst a surface to make sure that he doesn't topple over. And once again, the rigidness of the cape, though still pretty formidable, is not as tough and as durable as that of the original DC Rebirth black and purple variant. But just again, the novelty, it's not going to necessarily tickle everybody's fancy, but strangely, it's actually doing a number on me, even if it's not able to distract me from some of the nitpicks that I have with the buck itself. Though, is it just me? I don't know if maybe it's the translucency of the plastic, but something about the head sculpt looks a little different. It looks like it was slightly overhauled. It's not necessarily the Court of Vowels blue version, but it's also not the original black and purple variants where he's got, like I said, that Jeremy Strong kind of look to his face. For those of you who don't know, Jeremy Strong was one of the main characters from Succession. He's been in a bunch of movies. Once you see him, you'll know exactly who I'm talking about. He, it, it, DC Rebirth Batman, at least in McFarlane Toys form, always looked like him wearing the cowl. Here, I don't know if it's because it's lost a little bit due to the translucent blue, but something about the head looks a little different. It almost looks like a brand new head sculpt. It almost looks like it's something completely different, but I can't quite pull my finger on it to necessarily confirm. But at least it's something that is got a strange different nuance to it that makes it look a little bit compelling. And it's more than what I can say for the included gadgets, which are of course, once again, the battering and the grapple. It's the exact same sculpt for either, only this time, much like the figure itself, they got that translucent icy blue colorway, icy green blue to be exact, and fundamentally, they are the exact same thing. They are baked into his, his gripping hand on the right fairly well. Unfortunately, no extra hands, kind of like the McFarlane Digital had, so that would have been a nice additional touch, especially since you are taking into consideration that you're paying a little bit of extra money for this guy. This is a $30 figure considering that it's a limited GameStop exclusive edition. But since you are dealing with a limited edition, he technically does come with the much more prestigious and fancy base that is rectangular and wider with the bat symbol right there in the middle. And much like the figure himself, it's translucent icy green blue. And then along with that, you also got a base for the trading card that is also doubling as a certificate of authenticity. And it's got that similar display like a lot of the collector's editions or limited editions tend to have. This time, keeping up with the theme, it's translucent icy blue. Although I feel like the shade of blue on the base as well as the one for the figure itself is a little... It's a little bit more saturated. It kind of takes the hue wheel and kind of pushes it more towards the blue rather than the green as opposed to the figure. You'll notice that... I don't know if it comes across well in camera. So that may or may not bug certain people's OCD. In fact, the more I look at it, the more I'm getting triggered myself <laughs> that they couldn't stick with the same color hue. So that's a little bit of a discrepancy. But at least they keep the trend going with these collector's editions where you have a little bit of extra value packed in here with this overall kind of theme. And like I said, it may not be necessarily for every single 
collector out there unless you happen to be a completionist and you're going for the ultimate DC Rebirth Batman collection. Which is more or less what you're dealing with right here. Pretty much almost all of the DC Rebirth Batman. I say almost because technically speaking there is a fifth DC Rebirth Batman variant out there. Except I unfortunately didn't really feel the need to pick them up and that's going to be the one included in the Batman vs Omega 2-pack which originally was a McFarlane Toy Store exclusive before he probably realized just how many overstock he had so he kind of punted a few over to Amazon you can technically speaking pick it up at Amazon and frankly I just didn't think he was worth it because it's literally from the pictures I scanned them up and down left and right judiciously and it's literally the exact same thing as this guy right here, except he's got an alternate head sculpt with blood coming out of his grimmest mouth. That is it. There's no battle damage on the suit. There's no additional molds uh, or uh, sculpting detail changes as far as like gashes to make it look like he's even more battle damaged. Not no torn up capes, no different accessories, nothing. He's literally the exact same thing as that guy, same accessories and everything, just different head sculpt. And he happens to come with Omega, which also boasts a brand new head sculpt, an unmasked battle damage head sculpt with, like I said, some scratches and scars and, and things on his face. Outside of that, you're literally paying, I think, $50 on Amazon or right now on sale for 30 bucks for alternate head sculpts. That, that's it. And I just personally could not justify that just to incorporate them in this video. So technically speaking, there's five variants of the DC Rebirth, but these are the four that I feel matter the most from a very introspective level where you're dealing with either very different color schemes, specifically between these two. Obviously, you got the OG, but then you have a very drastically different variant included in the Clayface 3-pack gold label set where you have a much later grayscale that may or may not be some people's preference over the standard one. But then you're dealing with these two that most recently got announced, one of which is a GameStop limited edition that is just so out there and so extreme that it almost kind of warped its way around and made me end up falling in love with it. I would even argue more so than the McFarlane digital stuff, which is definitely going to be a point of controversy for collectors going forward in 2024. Since it looks like McFarlane may or may not be doubling down more so on McFarlane Digital. And that could definitely be a very huge crux as to figuring out whether or not this guy is going to either sit on the shelves or actually sell. And we'll have to wait and see because only time will be able to tell that. And it's going to be that time as well as sales reports that are going to actually give us some form of gauge as to whether or not this whole McFarlane Digital is actually going to work. Because... I'm only one person and I can't really speak for all people, but right now, like I said, that first impression is rather warped because I feel like it's a huge shame that out of all the variants of the DC Rebirth Batman or any Batman figures, period, that happens to be injected with this whole digital NFT market, happens to be this guy that is really not a bad figure. You have a very different color scheme with the gray that is quite literally in between these two. So that's a little bit different. A different yellow for the belts and the symbol. And then a different blue that feels like a whole new suit that is part and partly lifted from the whole Court of Owls storyline. And then furthermore, to me, one of my favorite things that McFarlane sometimes includes with their Batman, an unmasked head sculpt. I love that. I love it when figures include that. But then you have to justify that extra $5 price because I'm expecting a comic. I'm expecting a an actual Build-A-Figure piece. No, you get a digital collectible of a figure that I already own. And I can't really do much with that. The process of redeeming it was very unintuitive. So much so that honestly, going forward, if I see a really awesome figure reveal from McFarlane, but then it says McFarlane Digital, Knowing that it's going to be inflated with that extra $5, that can actually create a very huge dent in my desire to even want to pick that figure up. Maybe if he marked it down to the standard $20 or maybe kind of meet us halfway like he's been doing with certain figures where they go for like $22.99. Okay, maybe. But at $25 you got to deliver something else. Hell, I probably would have even justified $25 if it came with both this digital collectible as well as a digital Build-A-Figure piece. Because I got to be honest, I don't know if it's my, my naivete, but I was expecting that. I was expecting an actual digital Build-A-Figure piece along with this. 
But no, it was just this guy. And in order to get the Build-A-Figure, I need to go out there and hunt for either Green Lantern or Aquaman. And actually collect all three. Then my wallet and my McFarlane Toys digital account will then recognize that I have all three. And then boom, I have Mongol. Okay, I'm $75 in and I got a digital Build-A-Figure that I can't really build myself. You're gonna have to do a little bit better than that, McFarlane. I'm sorry. If you guys have managed to come across this McFarlane Digital Wave, whether it be in stores or maybe your order has finally shipped from your desired retailer, let me know what you guys think about this initial kind of induction into the McFarlane Digital Collectibles uh, market as far as getting this figure and then trying to, to, you know, dip your toe into that pond because right now, like I said, I feel like it would have gone a long way to go should the price have been a little bit more welcoming. But at $24.99, I'd say they have to scale it back. And I kind of have an idea of where you guys stand, but I still want to hear the dialogue be fully expressed in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this comparison video, let me know by hitting the thumbs up button. If you did not, hit the thumbs down. And as always, guys, stay humble. I'll see you later.